It's a complicated question, and I, and I don't think there's one answer to that, because I know from my own experience, on one side, I have to do, I can go into external rotation very easily, and then contract to stabilize. On my other side, the tighter side, I'm, doing, I'm still doing this and this and this. I'll do, I'll do that action probably for five times as long as I need to do it on this side. On this side, my gluteus medius overfires, overfires. So when I come into janitor task on this, on the right side, my gluteus medius is overfiring. I'm in fact trying to get it to relax. Do you understand how confusing this is? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't let it go, you can't. If you can't let it go, gluteus medius is an intra, the front fibers are, in, are internal rotators. If they are chronically locked tight, the thigh will not go into external rotation. Easy. It will be, this will be resisting the external rotation. Because this is tight. If this is tight. So you gotta let it go before so you, you gotta let it go. go. And then you stabilize and come back. Exactly. And so because my body is so wonky, as you all know, one side is doing one thing, the other side is doing some the opposite thing. I have learned to understand, <laughs> it's like it's so different what I have to do on each side when I get into a pose. It's, it's actually the opposite thing. I'll try to, I'll show you what I mean by that, right? So I'm here, I'll just try to break it down for you so you can see. Right side, damage your pasta without making any adjustments, okay? Look at the angle of my, yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing anything, right? That's, that's sort of my resting from Do you see what I'm saying? This side, gluteus medius, is completely, is relaxed. It let go. My leg fell into external rotation. I didn't do anything. I'm just doing the same thing on each side. But here it relaxes, it drops down an external rotation without any effort. It's just the placement of the bones. Now all I have to do is a little bit of this. And I'm in the pose. On this side,
before they can start engaging what they need to engage, they have to figure out what they need to release first. So that then they can start to engage second. How do you assist that person? This person? What I would do in a situation like this is either go right back to the beginning, the beginning again. Right back to the beginning again. If I wasn't going to go right back to the beginning again, it was just a hands-on assist, um, do it. It would be very simple. So lift your leg up a little so you're a simple person. You're trying to come forward now. I would just do a little bit of this. Right at the hip. Putting my thumb in here, waiting, you know, looking for a little release in here. I wouldn't push this way. And I wouldn't push this way. Because the problem is in here. This is the problem. This is what's not releasing. It's not this, it's not that. It's right in here. Really the best thing for that person to do who's here is put this hand on the floor, on the floor right here. And this hand they put here. And they just, they're just, they just got to be patient. Got to be patient here. You can do a little PNF here. Resist up, pull, 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 and then let it go down. So the anterior fibers of gluteus medius is tight, usually pectineus is tight, which is one of the adductors, usually the other adductors are tight. Usually if, if the leg is tight in this position, they're all kind of tight. They're all tight. But sometimes it gets very specific. Sometimes it's the, um, the quads that are tight that aren't letting go. Bringing tone to the weak side begins to shift energy. It begins to pull the energy that's going to be released from the spasm over into its where it needs to go. Whenever there's too much energy locked in one place, there's not enough energy somewhere else. So you work, you can work at it from either perspective. You can loosen what's tight, what's in spasm, or you strengthen what's weak. And in our yoga practice, I hope we're doing all of the above all of the time throughout the practice. And that's why it's such a powerful practice. I think for a lot of people, that's the issue. That's part of the puzzle, why they can't sit in lotus posture because their internal rotators are locked short, tight, and not releasing. Can't engage the strength of lateral rotators until the front releases. When the front starts to release in here, then the lateral rotators, we 